Okay, hello boardroom gamers. Um, today we're doing something a little bit different, faction focus. I wanted to start talking about the different factions for Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. First though, I'll kick off with what this is and what this isn't. This is not a tutorial on how to play Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. This is more of a deep dive into the different armies that are available in the game Heroes Land, Air, and Sea. There are actually 10 that I know of for now. There might be more, uh, but I have 10. I have the uh, base game, then I have the Plague and Pestilence expansion, and the uh, Air and Sea expansion. So there's four and four and two, which brings it to a total of 10. Today, what I wanted to do was talk about the Humans faction. So the Humans faction, all that's known for certain is that the humans, I'm gonna show you a little bit of little other stuff here. There's their player board there. Um, all that's known for certain is that humans, the youngest race, first sailed to Ogmore from far away. The specifics of their homeland have been lost to time, but there are those who maintain that they're not native to this world. Pointing to the design of their water and aircraft, the few that have preserved the old ways claim the extraordinary vessels once traveled amongst the stars, regardless of its exact origin. Human civilization has shown an unprecedented explosion in, econo in economic and cultural growth in its new home. The originally nomadic humans discovered an affinity for the open plains and their territories now delineate the far-reaching meadows of Ogmore. Families sit by firelight for hours contemplating the unobscured night sky as their children share their dreams of one day becoming a paladin, a human conduit of light and righteousness. Perhaps the spiritual connection they feel with the boundless heavens is indeed evidence that they once traversed the interstellar beyond. This history has become tiresome, though, to the many humans who now bathe in the luxuries of manna. Goblets overflow in taverns with deep red wines artfully crafted from the finest combinations of sorcery and horticulture. Crops, as much as conjured as they are cultivated, and the bounty is often lush and plenty enough to invoke impressions of an agricultural empire in even the smallest settlement's fields. Before the smoke rising from sacked villages, clouded Ogmore skies, human farmers ate like kings and their royalty feasted like the gods themselves. War has fallen on Ogmore and the life of the king has been claimed by the murderous elven Shadow Guild. With no named heir to the throne, preparation for impending battle now falls to the people. As mysticism is retrofitted for war, citizens of the Human Alliance have reclaimed the old ways, harvesting their yield by sweat and stamina. Keepers of archaic naval tradition and members of the religious order alike have been called upon to defend the development of mankind. They strengthen their bodies and minds ready to meet the contentious races that threaten their distinguished evolution with justice and swift irrevocable retribution. Retribution. So that's right from the box. I'm not gonna pretend like I made all of that up. And uh, Dapper Geek, thanks for hosting. I do appreciate that. Uh, that's right from the box. That's the lore for the humans. What I wanna go into is there are three heroes for each faction. There's gonna be, uh, in per this particular faction, there is a paladin, a mage, and a swashbuckler. I'm gonna show you uh, some of those cards here. There's the paladin. It says here from boyhood, Lelithar dreamed of one day bringing peace to Ogmore. He devoted himself to this cause, driving his ascent in the luminous cathedral to the order of the paladins. When he realized there would be no peace for his noble race, though it was with a heavy heart, he drew a hard line between the humans and the other factions. So his deal is uh, in, in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, there are three towers. So we'll get into it a little bit. There are three towers that you build. Uh, you start with a capital city, a level one, then a level two, then a level three. You'll notice here that there are three different abilities for each different capital city level. So the Paladin here, he requires a cathedral to be built before you can summon the Paladin. Dapper Geek, you've played this game. I see you say you love this game. I do too. I don't get it to the table nearly enough. Hoping you get it to the table more than I do, but do, do plan on seeing it on our stream sometime soon. I'm really excited about it. So a level one capital, if you have the cathedral, lets your warriors get plus one strength if battling in a plains region. That's where you can harvest food. If you upgrade your capital level two, the warriors may occupy plains regions, worker spaces, and collectives they for serfs. Serfs can only, normally only serfs can collect food, but this says warriors can collect food if you have a level two cathedral. Level three cathedrals say heroes, heroes cost two fewer resources of your choice to recruit. That's kind of nice. It lowers the food cost for all of the heroes that you're going to recruit. Now the paladin. Paladin says gain two if the paladin wins a battle. Uh, I'm sorry. 
gains plus one movement for a level one citadel if at least one serf is in his army. So if he's walking with a serf, they'll both have, well, he'll have plus one movement. Um, plus one attack if at least one surf is in his army, and gain two victory points if the paladin wins a battle and at least one surf is in his army. So he really, uh, he really gathers the masses and says, "Come with me. We're gonna, we're gonna go fight a war." That brings us to the university. Now the university is what spawns the mage. A citadel level one will let you, uh, uh, you may always tax instead of another capital action. So I guess the mage just pretty much captures a bunch of. Food, mana, or ore. When you research on level two, you may pay one food to draw one extra spell card. Up to three spell cards. Up to three extra spell cards. So you could draw quite a few. And then the level three citadel says each plains region you control at the end of the game is worth an additional victory point. That could be that could be a game changer for sure. Um, if you're harvesting all those plains with your Palette or your warriors, plus your serfs, getting all that food, spending less of it on your heroes because you have the level three cathedral, that could pay off in the end. Now the mage. It's Prince Orm. As headmaster of Ogmore's most prestigious university of magic, Prince Orm's many noble pupils afforded him a nobility of his own. First to develop spells of luxury, Orm's reputation grew with the royal families. His incantations alone are known to spring an entire crop to bloom, but his real power lies in his manipulation of the dark magic of war. His abilities include with a level one university. When collecting resources, you may collect any resources from the mage's region instead of its normal resource. When the mage attacks you on level two, when the mage attacks, you may pay any resources in any combination to cast spells. Super handy. Uh, I found myself lacking mana or, or whatever the cost is for spells. It's usually mana, but not always. I, I found myself lacking in the cost to play a lot of those spells. And if he can spend food, as if it were mana, having the serfs and the warriors harvest the food, that could be huge. And level three, when the mage attacks, combat spells cost half of their mana rounded down. So not only can he spend anything in lieu of mana, he spends half of it. The mage is pretty darn powerful for sure. That takes us to the tavern. What good human town, what uh, hum human town will be good without a tavern? When an army containing serfs enters a plains region, gain one food. So just when they enter a plains region, you gain a food. You don't even have to wait to harvest it. So that could be interesting if your serfs um, got a little, like, moved a lot into plains regions. You could gather a lot of food as they move across the land. Level two, towers built in a plains region will cost two less uh, ore, which is super nice because, as you know, the towers cost one per space away. So... The farther they are the way, the more they cost. But if you put it in a plains, it will cost two less. And last, if you have two serfs in a plains, in a, if you have two serfs in a plains region, that region also collects two mana. Now, I've never had it where I had all three buildings and a level three capital. However, with the human um, synergy here, you'd be collecting a lot of food and a lot of mana and spending very little of it if you just recruited the mage out of all of that. That could be really, really powerful. So with the tavern comes the swashbuckler. Now this was a very interesting story when I read it last night. This is Mabel and Mabe. Mabel and her pet monkey, Mabe. This legendary duo met on the Isle of Yelan, where Mabel's treacherous crew left her wounded to die. She found a capuchin monkey with a damaged limb of her own trapped under a fallen palm tree. Nursing her back to health, Mabel named her after the only person she could trust, herself. She named her Mabe. With their combined wits, they escaped their, t uh, they escaped their island prison and have since been the most daring pair in the open sea. She costs five food, unless you have the, uh, unless you have the cathedral, she would cost three food. Her abilities are that vessels are plus one movement when she is aboard. She's a swashbuckler, by the way. Her level two ability is plus one attack if on a vessel. And her level three is when the swashbuckler defeats an enemy vessel, she captures and pilots it until it's destroyed or she leaves it then it returns to the player's supply. So take their opponent's vessel, use it, destroy it, whatever you want to do, and then it goes to their supply, so they have to re-recruit it or build it again in a future action. So that could be that could be bothersome as well. Uh, let's see, the sea dock. I think I have their, their little sea vessel here somewhere. I wanted to show that off to the people at home. Oh yes, here it is. There's their little sea vessel. 
The Sea Dock. This galleon collects two food if in a sea region. Boy, these guys collect a lot of food. I mean, humans eat a lot of food. That's level one. Level two, when a sea region, when in a sea region, the galleon may start a battle with units in an adjacent region. Gain one strength for that battle. This includes attacking land units from a sea region. So they could pretty much start a fight in a land region while this is in a sea region. And level three, if the, sea, if the galleon battles a lone surf or warrior, that unit instantly dies. So if you leave your guys alone on the shore and this boat comes calling, it's gonna auto kill your guy. Do be aware of that. And then that brings us to the airship. Let's see here. I have the airship right here. Nope, that's dwarf. You are dwarf, you are elves. Thought I had the airship right here. Nope, nope. Well, dwarfs and griffin, that's what happened. Hmm, I must have misplaced the airship. The air spire allows the serfs in your courtyard, uh, they are considered adjacent to the airship. So that's pretty wild. They just hop onto the airship and then hop off anywhere the airship is as part of their movement. Level two, the airship collects two resources of its region's type, so it also collects resources. And level three, the airship is plus two attack when battling vessels. So, we've talked about the heroes, we've talked about the buildings, now let's talk about um, where their strengths are, maybe with some of the strategies. It really seems to me that their strengths lie in resource production. Not only resource production, but then lowering resource costs. I could really see you maxing out and staying high on the resource track with your food, mana, and ore. Um, if you did it right, you'd have a surplus a lot of the time. I think scribing spells would be a really good idea with the mage who pays half for, for playing those spells. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of abilities you could use, a lot of abilities you could manipulate with the lowered costs. And last but not least, the, the fact that the serfs get so much movement, either with the paladin, they have two movement normally. If they're rolling with the paladin, they'd have an extra movement. If, uh, well, they wouldn't have an extra movement. I'm sorry, they give the paladin an extra movement, so they would make him faster. Um, and then he would get stronger if the serfs were in the army. So if you rolled the paladin with one serf, he'd have two movement and five attack, and he'd have one attack. So the two of them alone would be seven attack. That's pretty darn strong. And then the airship. The airship being allowed to collect resources, which we kind of talked about. The ability for the humans to collect resources is phenomenal. That's going to wrap it up for the humans uh, fo faction focus. I hope you enjoy what we brought to you today. And as always, we'll catch you at the next boardroom meeting. Bye, everyone.